you fuck with the people who are going to space, who claim to be going to space. And then before you know it, through alignment or internal regulation, fucking corporate cowboys are in space. (laughs) Hell of an intro. I'll keep it. This one is, um, well, welcome to the next installment. I already lost count. The fourth installment of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. I'm your host, Alex, the intern, AP, your Corporate Cowboy, your resident incorporating associate. And uh, this episode is on, um, on the gray pill. Really, the gray pill. I haven't even done too much digging, too much digging into into the pills. I don't know how many fucking color of pills there are, but there isn't a gray pill. And again, this should serve as like a, as like an anthology for my posterity, the folks who come after me. Not even my my heirs of you know in, in blood or whatnot, but just. Folks, I'm passing the spark to. That's it. There is like... I've seen like the red pill, the blue pill, fucking purple pill. Because you you mix the two together or some shit. I don't even... Like if there's a green pill, I don't know what that looks like. I haven't... I Again, it was just a preliminary search on Google. And while I could do that now in real time, I'm not going to bore you. With something you can already do on your own. You want to know if there's a fucking green pill? Go ahead. Google. Green pill. Fucking duck, duck, go. Green pill. Please. Firefox it. (laughs) The gray pill is something that I haven't seen come up. And I don't know if it exists out there. But I believe there should be one. So I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all what I believe the gray pill should consist of. The gray pill should consist of just acknowledgement. Acknowledgement, knowledge, is just the experience, it's the knowing that there is right and a wrong, and that there is, and, and, and that there is always, um, there's always room for error, always, there's always room for error, that's the gray area, that's where corporate cowboys, that's where corporate thrives, people love implementing rules, people love, people at the top love implementing policy that they themselves don't follow, that disconnect between policy and practice, that, that shit was popular. Oof, popular when I was coming up. And then my return to school, I wanted to, I wanted to delve into that, really, really explore it, really investigate it. Why? Why the disconnect between policy and practice? Lo and behold, my fucking school also had similar disconnects in, in, in the way uh, their, their departments ran how the how the fields of research how do, how do you what do you call them how the um how the majors i guess like the majors of study how they're siloed from one another where there is very little communication going on between them then what the fuck what the fuck research is actually taking place if all that's taking place are just within those silos you're going to get an echo chamber anyways the gray pill and that's g-r-e-y or g-r-a-y or g-r-a-e-y i think i might go for that third one because fuck it it's english (laughs) the gray pill why it's significant why it's important because knowing that that there's good people and there's bad people out there who are both capable of doing good things just as well as bad things good people are capable of doing bad things bad people are capable of doing good things and this is a concept that's really hard to grasp i know it was difficult as fuck to grasp for me to grasp when i was younger um i was um i wouldn't say religious but came from a religious family, a uh, superstitious family. So I'd, I'd seen some shit growing up. 
and uh, always wondered why, why, why this, why that. I had those those dumb little ideas that only come up through uh, through learned experience. Why do bad people do bad things? Why do bad things happen to to good people? Why can't we all just get along? <laughs> Why don't we stop killing each other? Why can't we work together? Why can't business be emotionless? Why why do we let emotions get in the way of of better business practice? Why do we let emotion get in the way of better policy making? My guy. Fucking I'm not going to say emotions are are the issue, but it's the lack of understanding that there are good people with good reasons out there doing bad things and there are bad people out there who appear to be doing good things yeah i mean and and so what i'm doing here what i'm doing with this with this podcast what i'm helping my associates do isn't even a good thing it isn't even a bad thing it's in the gray that's where we operate it's in the gray when I was younger and I first learned the word black markets, I was like, dude, black markets? Like, where everything is illegal? I literally thought that black markets are places you could walk into with, I guess, cash and not have any of your purchases be traced, not have any of your transactions be tracked. And I wasn't far off. But damn, I wish we had black markets. You feel me? Because these places do not exist. You have to cultivate your own black markets. I got into a ton of that. I got got in trouble a couple of times. I won't lie. Your boy had a record very early on in his life. But I learned. I learned. I learned that there aren't white markets. (laughs) There's gray markets, baby. That's all there is. That's all there is. And some folks, some people either don't know how to operate in it because they weren't told that this is all in the gray. It's all in the gray. Maybe I'm too far gone. You feel me? And I'm just looking back, trying to shine a flashlight at motherfuckers behind me who are just as lost as I am, but they see the light. Okay? They see the light. And I'm in, I'm not turning back at this point. I'm not turning back only because I know the repercussions of coming back and not going through are death. So it's easy for me to say that everything is in the gray and it's hard to understand it, especially when you're young or you're older, you just don't have the experience, you've lived a quote unquote good life, you've been told or you've been validated in a way where your life has been so good, you might not have experienced any uh, measurable discomfort. And so you believe everything you do is good, everything you do is right. Why? Because you haven't been hurt or because you haven't hurt anybody and in doing so everything is just everything is valid well i'm here to tell you corporate doesn't give a fuck corporate will take what you believe and if you should choose to get a job i mean un- un- unless you're born unless you're born into money unless you're born with into resources unless you're born into wealth you've got your own set of struggles trust me believe me you have your own set of struggles why because your baseline for happiness your baseline for pleasure your baseline for hedonism has already been set so fucking high that's why Folks, whenever whenever they believe themselves to be too good, and again, good in that instance is highly subjective. Good in that instance is highly relative because, yeah, you could have all the money in the world and be a miserable fuck. You could, you could be the CEO and then not be the next morning. You feel me? 
you can take yourself out and not be any happier for it. But the baseline for some individuals are so fucking high. That's why to them, pleasure, what looks good, all of that is inverted. It's inverted. That's where the term, what, like slumming comes from. Well, I'm slumming it. Somebody who is a perceived higher class, apparently higher class, kicking it with urchins. That's, you'll find a lot of that in corporate. You'll see a lot of that in life. And the reason I'm, I'm sticking to corporate, well, which is it's the theme of the podcast, is that life hasn't, life hasn't brought me any better struggles than just struggling in corporate. Why? Because I know at least in corporate, there's um, there's a, a, a more tangible system. There's a more tangible set of rules in corporate. And it's much better than the streets. Much better than the streets. I know that it's modeled on a lot of, uh, on a lot of street justice and street politics more like prison even but prison rules prison rules have yet to be implemented in corporate and that's where that's where a lot of freedoms come from that folks would rather not recognize folks would rather not acknowledge but they're there they're definitely there <clears throat> again if you started with this episode Keep in mind, this is just like my my journal. As your intern, it's just a recorded journal, a recorded entry, proof of life, call it what you want. But it's making sure that that the corporate cowboys ought to live on and will live on, even if it's going to be digitally. Even if I get taken out and marked. Fuck it. I know I'm not the only one. I've already met literally hundreds, if not thousands. Can I name them all? No. (laughs) I won't. (laughs) But they're all there. They know who I am. They know me by name. They've seen my face. We've worked together. They know what the deal is. They know how it goes. And all the dirt we might or might not have done together. That's shit we got to live with. That's shit we got it's shit we have to live for. Why? Because in that in that crime, that word, taboo as it might be, it's not bad. In crime there's opportunity, and in opportunity there is always crime. See what's what's legislated, what's legislated isn't always right. Should they could again legislate for what's wrong and make what's right the crime? But fam, when that happens, are you a criminal? Are you a stand-up person working criminally? It's just how the shit goes. It's just how the shit goes. And the country, from whatever country you might hail from, is no different than working in a company. You're born into it. That's the difference. You're born into this company. You're born into its bylaws. And when you grow up old enough and you choose to uh, get a job, get a, get a work permit, even when you're younger, because this truthfully does go out to those over age, but I do recognize that some younger cats, some younger folk would like to enter the game a little earlier through emancipation processes or work permits in high school. And I get it. It's cool. You want to get your hands dirty early and you want to know what it feels like. I appreciate it. I get it. But this one really goes out to those who understand that what they're getting themselves into is another contract. One that you aren't born into. One that you're taking on voluntarily. And what you do with your time when you're working for corporate is really up to you. Yeah, some choose the route of 
either faking until you make it, working to get recognized, working to get compensated. They just want to be set up. They need stability. They need a routine. They're trying to get a family. They start courting somebody or being courted. Go on a couple dates, get married, invite folks from the office, have children, buy a house, grow old, fucking die. Cool. That's nice. (laughs) Not me. Not me. Why? Because folks like that don't do much to change corporate. That's literally blood money. That's that's literally... That's literally blood money that a corporation will pay so that anything they do under the table is swept under the rug by above board payments via salaries, via retirement parties, via office parties, holiday parties. All those justifiable expenses, not labeled miscellaneous. That's what they want. That's what they need. They need people. They need people to just be processed like animals. They need people to not rock the boat. That's what they need. What they don't want is is a fucking corporate cowboy in the ranks. Young. Well, shit, I used to be young. Reckless. Reckless in the sense that they have nothing to lose. They have no familial ties. They have no... No liabilities. They have no previous dependence, obligations, no children, no wife. Just guns for hire. Guns for hire. Guns with no serial number. <clears throat> Perfect. Perfect marks for being a corporate cowboy. Not for working for corporate. That's, that's the last thing they need. That's the last thing they need. But corporate's been fucking up lately. Corporate isn't so much treating their workforce as as one that they should be cultivating in order to have more drones. Corporate's been fucking up. It used to run like a well, well, like a spinning top. But the inertia's running out. Nobody's pulling the string. Nobody's turning it up again. Nah. It's wobbling. It's wobbling. It's moving from something that was perfectly aligned, black and white, into that gray area. Into that fucking gray area. And now, um, for sponsors, today, what did I do yesterday? Or the last episode? Because, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm on break right now, but when I return, um... You'll be hearing from me less. The goal is to have these maybe once or twice a week. I'll try to do more. You can follow my Patreon. Look up the Corporate Cowboys. And you'll recognize us almost immediately. Join and become a patron if you want. I believe there's a couple of tiers there. Five, ten, twenty dollars, something like that. Uh, choose uh, choose to donate if you'd like. Just shoot us a dollar, shoot us a hundred. Doesn't fucking matter, really. I know what I'm doing, but um, but the money and any money I go to is gonna go towards uh, legal fees. There's always fucking legal fees, and they're never ending. The ultimate goal is to become um, is to go nonprofit. Nonprofit really being that. In the sense that I would love to be able to handle millions, but your boy is only making what, like a couple thousand. I just need, I just need something to live on. That's it. I just need living costs, and the rest, it's all work. That's where I thrive. That's where I thrive. That's where, that's where I belong. That's where I need to be. But you know, right now with the way things are going, your boy's going through, um, your boy's going through a, a retooling. A retooling in his life and uh, as soon as he gets gets through this training then back onto bigger and better things so uh, today's sponsor is uh, knives don't know if I don't know if I've uh, had knives on and again I don't have corporate sponsors as of yet but if and when I do There'll be products 
you know, things that I'll actually use, things that everybody should use. I don't know, something everyday carry, guns, ammo, lights, knives, pens, briefcases, suits, jackets. See, you know, I'm just naming things off in the in the in the in the order that I'd likely use them. But today is on knives, so it's not too serious, and uh, it shouldn't be. Um, it shouldn't be too. Uh, it shouldn't be too confusing as to why. With knives, uh, you're able to cut through your day, <laughs> pretending it's a read. With knives, you're able to cut through your day. Any of the stresses that you have before you are easily resolved with a knife to the neck. Or another vital point. Anywhere blood courses at a rate that's slightly higher in volume than your finger, you're fucked. <laughs> and with knives, you can fuck people. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, if you're looking for us on <laughs> on Instagram or on YouTube, I believe I believe uh, all of this has been made explicit. So it's got the explicit warning on it. So again, it is for folks ideally over 18, but hey, if you snuck in, it's because you want to participate. You want to be a part of the action. You want to know what the fuck is going on. You need to know. I get it. I get it. I was there. I was doing it too. I was doing it too. But you need to recognize that as somebody who's underage, you have slightly less rights. You might believe you have more protection, but you have slightly less rights. And if uh, you want to know more, shoot me a DM. Shoot me a message. I'll tell you all about it. All right. Um, yeah, with knives. With knives, you can have them... Uh, uh, what's it called? You can have the blades smoked, I guess. You can move with smoked blades. There's some knives out there that are coated or have some kind of coating on them to make them non-reflective so when it comes time to use your knife it's dark essentially it's the opposite of light and folks won't be able to perceive it as quickly you're moving in the gray that's it there are some knives that are uh you know like not satin but uh a stone wash it's called there are some that are stone wash out there and while they provide some some obscuring obscuring characteristic where uh, they might not be easily easily locked onto by the human eye, they still provide a measure of uh, a measure of um, what's it called? Well, I suppose you'd never want to intimidate anybody. Don't intimidate somebody with a knife. How about that? When you pull it out. Either you're going to use it or you're not, regardless of whether the blade is satin or the blade is uh, smoked or the blade is fucking coated, with Teflon, all black, if you're moving in the night or not. You need it, you use it, put it away, witnesses, deal with them or don't, either way, knives, trademark. <laughs> well shit welcome back I didn't go far I was here just need a quick drink we're about 20 minutes in and if you've just joined us we're talking about the gray area and it's not the stuff in your brain. It's not the stuff in your noodle. It's not gray matter, though. That's where a lot of this. That's where a lot of this conversation came from. And now I'm able to to uh, elaborate on it because obviously I'm not having. I'm not holding conversations with anybody anymore. It's just me. It's just me by myself. It's your boy Alex, corporate cowboy. And in the gray area, in the gray area, when taking the gray pill, you have to recognize, you have to realize that 
you affect the gray pill as much as the gray pill affects you. Like when you take the red pill, for example, and it's only because the gray pill, the gray pill still might be a, an abstract concept that's a little difficult to grasp, a little difficult to internalize, if you will. Get it? When you ingest it, you internalize it like a gray pill. You take with water or some take them dry. Savages. But when you take the red pill, what the red pill is doing is providing perspective on your life. And then you in turn provide validity to the red pill. You in turn provide how do I call it? Legitimacy? You in turn provide life to the red pill. So you live the red pill, essentially. When you take the red pill, you live the red pill. But not completely. Why? Because you're still you. You're still yourself. It could be the red pill, the blue pill. At the end of the day, you're still going to do what it is you want to do, informed by the red pill or the blue pill or not. And that's all this is. The gray pill is perspective. It's additional perspective. I noticed that red pill, that the red pill adherents have like, I've noticed that red pill adherents have certain um, values, we'll call them, have certain values as do blue pill people, men or women. And when you're working in the gray pill, all that goes out the door. Again, it's just another perspective. It's not economic. Uh, maybe it's transactional. Maybe uh, you could argue, one could argue that it's what I give you, you give me. It's mutual, I suppose. Definitely not the purple pill, a mix of the red and the blue pill. And again, I've only done a, a cursory look into what the, these other colorful pills mean. But what I'm pushing, what I'm selling, the pills I'm hustling and slanging are gray. Gray scale. And shit, there's a point there. It's perspective. At what point do you recognize it's gray? At what point do you at what point do you know that it's gray? How do you know that what you what you think is black doesn't have a little bit of white in it? That'd be gray. That's a scale. That's up there on the scale, is it not? How do you know what you think is white doesn't have a little black in it? That's gray. Qualifies classically on this gray scale and that goes back to what I uh, said originally where it's just a matter of knowing acknowledging even predicting not projecting but forecasting and you could be wrong in your forecast when you project when you project you, you do that um, outwardly when you predict and, and forecast you do that internally. But again, the word project means something entirely different inside of corporate than it does in society. Stick around a little longer and you'll know when to tell the difference. I suppose in that way, I'm kind of like your friend. The friend you never had. <laughs> the motherfucker who's been through some shit. I'm not going to claim through hell because it could always get worse. But I've seen some shit. I've been through some shit. I've got stories that aren't even mine to let you know about what's possible and what isn't. And I hope you take those all with a grain of salt if you want. But I have no reason to lie to you yet. And understanding that there's, there's good people capable of doing bad, horrible things. And there's bad people capable of doing extraordinarily benevolent, benevolent, benevolent things. 
<laughs> so yeah, it's a little hard. When you have to be the one who goes out there, introduces themselves, extends a hand, you don't know who the fuck's hand you're shaking sometimes. And that's hard. Why? Because as much research as you can possibly do, you can do as much research. You can do as much research as you possibly can before entering a room, and there will always be someone there with no name, with no face, until you go introduce yourself. That's the beauty of life. Corporate, I mean, not so much. That kind of unpredictability calls into question a lot. Adds new motive, adds a new agenda, a new objective. Like that's the kind of awareness you first take account of when you enter a room. Who the fuck are they, right? But you do the, all that shit internally, you don't project, you just move to the room, take all the oxygen out of that bitch, and command it, work it, you work the room, make your rounds, get what you need, bounce. And again, how you work the room is really, it's, it's, a, it's, con, it's contextual. <clears throat> but working in the gray, taking the gray pill, it's our perspective. It's our perspective. I can't physically sell you a gray pill. Keep your eyes out on the on the site store. You know, if you see some gray pills on there, I'd snatch them up. But <laughs> obviously, they ain't gonna be. Uh, they, they're not gonna be. Um, there's no guarantees attached to it. Well, how have I been going for? About half an hour. Not bad. Not bad. Um, when you take the gray pill. The perspective, the perspective you receive, um, it's, it's unlike anything else, like what your parents told you or your teachers told you in school, what you learned in school, what you learned in, in D.A.R.E., in the D.A.R.E. program, what you learned through GATE to the Gifted and Talented Education program, Gifted and Talented Education their the the developmental programs and I mean they they should have kept up with those right I mean if they wanted a successful program it's just the unceasing communication that's required it has to be developing and and innovating always uh, we posted up um, a picture that progress isn't so much innovation and there's truth to that there's a lot of truth to that. Why? Because um, innovation implies a gray area. It implies a gray area. It, it, it implies it, it implies un, uncharted, unexplored territory. And it, it, it implies more to investigate. It implies opportunity to make clear. Gray shouldn't be something that you're scared of. Gray should be something you embrace. It's the gray pill. You just pop that bitch down the hatch with water or not. And you get back to work. Life is work. Life is hard. But with the gray pill, another perspective doesn't hurt. <laughs> So in corporate, none of that shit's gonna matter. In corporate, they'll call into question everything you've learned. And and, and they do that. You, I'm sure you've noticed or you noticed growing up from institution to institution, from moving from company to company, moving from corporation to corporation, moving from elementary school to middle school, moving from middle school to high school. The shit you've learned the shit they've called in the question, told you, oh, actually, what you learned in first grade, it's not the same what you learned in sixth grade. Actually, what you learned in sixth grade isn't the same as what you learned in eighth grade. 
You know what they taught you in eighth grade? Not the same what they teach you in 10th grade. You know when you get to 10th grade, everything you learn there, it's all bullshit after you graduate. <laughs> you get to university, everything you, everything you think you're about to learn in university, all bullshit and equally disprovable in the real world. But the point of keeping you in education, the point of why I returned, is to continue um, making you dependent. And I'm trying to take a look into this system, find out where the dependency is, see if I can break it. Throw a fucking gray pill. And the gray pill could be anything. Could be cement, could be iron, could be lead. <laughs> it's just a gray pill. It's just the gray pill, okay? Another perspective. I mean, what's wrong with a little gray pill, huh? What's wrong with another perspective? What's wrong with the gray pill? Nothing, really, nothing. I mean, you could make an argument for or against anything. I've learned that much. I played the devil's advocate many a times, and I was able to get off clean, got dirty a couple times. But hey, it happens when you take the gray pill. Such is life. Life isn't all black and white, as much as we'd like to think, as much as I'd like to think. Man, if it was all black and white, I should be dead five times over. But no, I mean, really, at my age now, I should only be dead like two or three times that I can count. But um, if it were black and white, I should have never made it out of childhood, really, because I was a... Because... <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I should have never made it out of out of my childhood because I even then I already began to question. I already began to look at the gray area. I already began to see with my eyes and think with my fucking brain, with my gray matter, exercising it. And just through doing that, people should have known I was a fucking threat. But I learned to assimilate. I learned to integrate. I learned to infiltrate. I learned to move in to corporate. So here I am now, now that I've been in and out, I know what the rules are, I know how to move, I know what it looks like, I'm, I'm going back for a second taste, I'm going back for another hit, every, every time is like the first time, so I'm going back for another mission, I mean, if you look at all of life as a fucking struggle, all of life as a war, as a battle between good and evil, then I'm in the same struggle. I'm in the same fucking war, right? But I'm going to take on another contract. And this time, this time, it's not going to be me signing it. This time, it's going to be me making them. It's not going to be me going in and looking for an agreement. It's just gonna be an agreement as it ought to be it's gonna be offers people cannot deny that's it it ain't gonna be offers that people can't refuse there's not gonna be there's not gonna be any threats there aren't gonna be intimidation on on the record at least but they're gonna be offers based in truth and for the betterment of business, for the continuation of business, for opportunity, for innovation. Because at the end of the day, a, a corporate cowboy cannot stand for corruption. Yeah, they might be corrupt. They might move and do bad things. They might count themselves as bad people. But if you're willing to sacrifice yourself, if you're willing to sacrifice yourself for the continuance of opportunity, for the continuance of innovation, if you're willing to be the spearhead that potentially snaps off when they're used to stab somebody with, if you're willing to be a bullet with no fucking name, a gun with no serial number, defaced, or not, I mean, some guns come just come without serial numbers. It happens. Then you could be a corporate cowboy. 
And um, and that sucks because at the end of the day, it might be a corporate cowboy who takes me out. And I I got at least another 30 years in me. At least another 30 years before I take myself out. I'm too weak. I'm too weak. I can't pull the trigger. I'm a fucking sucker for life. I'm, you know, and and superstitious otherwise. But it ain't going to be me that kills me. I think I've said it before. I'm not suicidal, but I have a death wish. <laughs> and when you're moving in corporate, nothing is guaranteed. Motherfuckers will move on you, plot on you for the tiniest bit of clout if they can manage, if they can continue to manage, and if they can keep their positions, if they can not have any change in their benefits. Motherfuckers are willing to kill entire families. Have I seen it happen? I can't say that I have. But when you take the gray pill, you can see why. You can see why it's done. They're humans at the end of the day. They're humans taking the gray pill. They're humans who've been force-fed the gray pill even. Yeah, when we're all young, we're all innocent, right, blank slate. I don't know if you consider white to be the clean color or black to be the clean color. White on white or black on black. Fucking, you know what I mean? Dirt shows up on either one of those. So <laughs> it, it doesn't fucking matter. In the gray, you just accept it. You acknowledge that that shit happens, that it exists. So you're a little more not flexible. You're not accepting. You're, you're not. You're a little more flexible. You're a, a little more adaptable. You might not. Yeah, you might not like it. Nobody likes it. Nobody. Nobody likes losing their innocence. Nobody likes having the veil pulled from their eyes, having the wool drawn from their face and, and exposing the naked world to them, what it fucking looks like. And yeah, I might be viewed as a villain one day. I might be viewed as a hero. I honestly don't give a shit. I'm a corporate cowboy. And the qualifier as a as a corporate that that qualifier that modifier being in corporate just means I move in groups and within groups. That's it. I'm 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 super floyous. Corporate cowboys are super floyous. You think corporations don't have allegiances? You think corporations, regardless of where they're based in, don't fly flags? My guy, corporate cowboys. Shoot guns for no reason. <laughs> for no real reason. You might be <laughs> you might you might pay more, right? You might pay more. You might pay me more. Me as a corporate cowboy, right? You might be you might have the ability to pay me double, triple, whatever the fucking contract is, and think you could get away with it. But if at the end of the day, I got you pleading and begging to think about your family, my guy or my girl, you should have thought about your family first. Because who am I to think about your family, right? I'm thinking about corporate. And if you're holding corporate back on some personal bullshit, if you're holding business back, if you're holding opportunity back, if you're holding innovation back, for the name of progress, because you want to continue, because you want to continue with the progress, like as if as if just you touching and pushing a button was a job. If you're not getting up out of your seat and doing something, if you're not if you're not creating more of those buttons to push, so that other motherfuckers can get up off their seats and create more buttons to push, the end game isn't to sit down and push a button forever, and that's what irks me about bottlenecks in corporate is that when they stop taking the gray pill, they forget that the world moves around them. And so 
the, the, the world passes them by or they pass by the world. They become drones. They sit down. They, they, they forget what it is to feel hungry because they feel a little bit more comfortable. The money in their pocket maybe got them a little bit more fatter. Their salary, they're not saving as much. They're probably saving the same amount as when they were, when they were in, in the lower ranks, right? But they're blowing the rest of it, just getting fatter, just you know, maybe buying better clothes. And I've been there. I've been told exactly this. I got a fucking story for y'all. But next time, because this one is on the great pill. <laughs> but when they get fat, they get complacent. They become the stereotypical fat cat, corporate fat cat. And, and, and they think that their claws, that their talons will continue to defend them. When they're fatter, they can't move. They become whales. And in the presence of shark... Their food. In the presence of a shark, their food. So, what do they do? They threaten to fire you? They have more to lose than I do. I don't have a family. I'm not feeding anybody else. I could... <laughs> I'm not... I, I could be in the wind the very next day. Feel me? And all you got on record is what? My employee number? That's what you're left with? But there's a way around them, taking the gray pill, thinking in that perspective, taking the gray pill consistently. If you took, if they took the gray pill consistently, they wouldn't be stuck. They wouldn't be in a rut. They wouldn't be 40, 50 years old. They wouldn't be 50, 60 years old, getting ready to retire because they've been a middle manager all their life, just holding other younger motherfuckers down and saying, oh, wait your turn, wait your turn. Like if you, if you, if you ever had a good idea, if you ever had a bright idea, if you ever had an idea better than theirs and you brought it to them and they told you to wait, they told you to keep your idea or they told you to shut up because they don't pay you for your idea. <laughs> if they told you to wait your turn, essentially, wait until you get promoted and then you can implement whatever you want. Don't. They're telling you what they did. And look where they are, dog. Look what if look look, look what the fuck it got them. Look what the fuck it got them. They stopped taking the grid pill when they told themselves that. When they were probably told them when they were probably told themselves that. Themselves that? When they were probably told that, yeah. When they were probably told that. So I can't be mad. I can't be mad unduly. I can't be excessively mad at them. Yeah, I, I, could, I could voice my opinion. I can, I can, be, I, I can be enthusiastic about it. And, and that's what it is. I'm not showing emotion. I don't hate them because they're them. I hate the predicament they've put me in. Why? Because now I got to knock them down. <laughs> They're in my way. They're in my way. I'm moving to the top. And and this is the kind of mindset I had when I was on the inside. But now I'm on the outside and I'm looking to do better, right? But while you're on the inside, for those of you still on the inside, I feel for you. I pain for you. I hope this podcast really resonates with you. Why? Because if you're stuck on the inside, you know what it feels like to be stuck on the inside. You're stuck in a rank. All you got is your is your position name you might be a clerk you might be an assistant uh no nah, nah, not even a, an assistant you might just be a, a clerk uh, a service agent you might be a level one crew member i've held all those positions and more i've moved up the ranks got close to uh running my own ship and i didn't i didn't do it why? Because I saw something better. I knew there was better out there. And even if I wasn't offered the opportunity to be better, it's a good thing. It's a good thing that I'm not running my own ship right now. Why? Because if I had stopped taking the gray pill and took whatever fucking color pill it was, they offered me and told me to fucking wait and wait and wait until I got my own ship. And then when I got my own ship, what? I'm just gonna sit there and push the ship button until I die? Fuck that. 
I would not be a corporate account. I would not be where I am today if I did that. If I stop taking the grid pill, I lose perspective on life and death. I lose perspective on what it is to be better. I lose perspective on what it is to have an opportunity. I lose the fucking opportunity. That's it. That's it. And when you see me, if you see me, (laughs) if you see me coming, when you see me coming, I don't appear like a threatening guy. I'm not. I'm not a threatening guy. I'm easygoing. I'm easygoing. I enjoy talking to people. I love talking to people. I love interviewing people. I love interrogating people. And I mean interrogating softly. Like interrogating, (laughs) interrogating with a purpose. Interviewing, talking with a purpose. I want to know about people's intentions. I want to know about their motive. I want to know about their goals, their aspirations. I want to know where they're going. I want to know where they're from. I want to know how they got here. I I want to know how they're going to get to where they're going and what I can do to help. Why? Because we're all on our paths. We're all corporate cowboys. We all could be corporate cowboys, except we have distractions. We have distractions. Oh, did you hear what, um, uh, what, Oh, did you hear about this new order that came down? Did you hear about fucking sports that, that that happened? Sports ain't paying me, bro. Sports ain't paying me. So maybe I'm not likable. If and when you meet me and you start talking about sports, I become this. I become. I, I just zone out. I'll zone out immediately. I'll look off into the distant. My eyes will glaze over. I'll get lost in thought on something else. But I'm not thinking about sports. Do you think about sports when you're talking about sports? Or is it just is it just something like a white noise, I guess, that comes out of your mouth and you're thinking something in the deeper parts of your gray matter? It's that shit that I want to talk about. I want to talk about what's going on in the gray matter. I want to know what's talking about. I want to know what's going on in the gray area. I'm trying to pop gray pills with my peeps. That's it. I'm trying to pop gray pills with my corporate cowboys, potential corporate cowboys, potential associates, prospective, prospective incorporating associates. This is me. I'm active. I'm always active. I've been active since a young gun. Shit, I'll fucking die active. If you're wondering what I'm drinking today, it's um, it's our second sponsor of the show. Actually, it's water. <laughs> Fucking drink water. I, I don't drink coffee. I can't drink coffee. I mean, I can drink coffee, all right? Fucking, I can drink anything. When I was younger, you should have seen me drink. But now, it's just water. Why? Because I'm saving coffee. I'm saving it. I'm, I'm not saving it, like stockpiling it like a prepper. I know preppers got fucking meals and and drinks and cans and coffee and sugar and guns and ammo saved up and stockpiled, but they're gonna fucking die on top of all that shit. Their 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 body won't be able to cover the mounds of shit that they have stored and stockpiled. So I'm not I'm not worried about them. I mean I'm worried about coming across one one day and uh, reaching out, introducing myself telling them what I'm about and how I expect to continue living in corporate, they might view corporate and the U.S. and the government as all synonymous and, you know, might see me as an enemy and smoke me that way. But it's a fucking chance I'll take. It's a chance I'll take. Why? Because corporate is the best chance we have. It's capitalism after all. Capitalism, baby. And those bottlenecks that I'm telling you about, those bottlenecks that I told you about, they're not corporate cowboys. That's just corporate. That's just additional corporate infrastructure to me. <laughs> when they stop living, who, who, said, who said that shit? When you stop living, you're dying or some shit. Was it Ben Franklin or, or Madison or Jefferson? The day you stop living is the day you start dying. I almost want to Google that. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll Google it. <laughs> Who said the day you stop living is the day you die? Albert Einstein. A 
According to News News, Albert Einstein is reported to have stated, once you stop learning, you start dying, and that quote has stayed with me for years. <clears throat> Albert Einstein, apparently. I was trying to look at one at a different one. Um, not Albert Einstein's, because I, I believe I remember Albert Einstein having said something like that. Once you stop learning, you start dying. Yeah, which is it's transferable over to corporate. Once you stop learning, once you stop living, once you stop having that hunger to move up, once you stop, once you stop wanting advancement, once you stop wanting to move up, when you stop wanting to be the CEO, because even the CEO becomes complacent, even the CEO takes a seat and pushes a button until they fucking die or jump out with the golden parachute. Even the CEO could get got, is what I'm saying. Even the CEO can one day stop taking a gray pill and get shot. I mean, get, get the shot. Could stop taking the gray pill and, and take the shot. Because <laughs> I, I recall saying that the gray pill was also, um, <laughs> what is it? A metaphor, a metaphor for lead? Yeah. Even a CEO could one day stop taking their gray pill, could stop living and begin dying, essentially. Driving their company, driving their organization, dri driving... An, an institution even, I mean, if it's a really predominant organization and, and an institution is, is, is what they're made of, like if the institution is essentially them by name, they could drive all that down. They could, they could die. I've seen it happen. And you, even on a small scale, it doesn't have to be fucking whales. It doesn't have to be whales of companies, man. Startups, these, these things we call startups, the amount of effort and money and energy that goes into them, it's immense. It's astronomical. And um, if they're not ran properly, if they're not ran with hunger, then yeah, you could expect them to atrophy and you can expect them to die and implode or, or split and break apart. Yeah, all, all that shit's possible. But when you, uh, when you stop having that perspective of the gray pill in which you no longer view life as the opportunity to be better but instead but instead seek stability but instead seek security you 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 give up you give up certain what is it you give up certain human characteristics you no longer become a human to me you just become a drone just another facet to corporate you, you you don't have the liberty. You don't have the freedom to to leave. You 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 become a liability. At least to me, not to corporate. Again, like I say, when you become part of the corporate infrastructure, fucking corporate loves you. Corporate would love to clone you. Corporate would love to have a hundred thousand of you, so they wouldn't have to hire anybody else. They could just keep you in a fucking basement, clone you a couple hundred thousand times, and and even <laughs> even make a market of just you, of just you to sell to other corporations with you trademarked. <laughs> I'm selling trademark use. In order to to make the perfect corp, you know, the perfect corporate drone trademark. Yeah, they, they don't have to be robots. They are humans. They literally are humans. I mean, they're wanting to replace more and more of the of the human labor with with robots and machine labor. I want to say that's a long way off, but what do I know? I'm not working in that market right now. Okay, like that's in my periphery. That's secondary to me. Why? Because while we have humans, humans will always be a primary market. Always, while we have humans. While we have us. And us, we, are so egotistical, are so driven on our presence, are so, are so tied to who we are, that we want to continue in, 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 like in an almost psychopathic manner. We want to continue, which is why... We end up stabbing people in the back, which is why uh, Cain and Abel had to happen, which is why contracts get made and then broken, which is why 
promises lead to little white lies, which is why all of that happens. Sorry. So it's not hard. It's not hard to see, essentially, when you see somebody die, it's, it's emotional. It takes a little toll. It's calls, it calls for a pause. It calls for a little recognition, a little, you know, a little acknowledgement that they're no longer with us. <clears throat> you know, even, even corporate cowboys fall and um and and the thought of it you know and the thought of a consummate professional falling victim to their profession it strikes a chord but it shouldn't be it shouldn't be discounted as impossible it happens all the time it happens all the time before you stop taking the gray pill. They stop taking the gray pill. It could be in the form of, you know, some gray hairs showing up. Or as simple as falling in love. They get a girlfriend. They get a wife. They get kids. And all of that, all of that detracts from that primal hunger to take on risk that primal hunger to not give a shit all of a sudden you give a shit you give a shit and who's there with an outstretched hand if not corporate corporate is willing to give you that stability you know what stick it out with us here 25 years toe the line serve a serve a little stint 25 years toe the line you push the papers that need pushing. You stamp what needs stamped. You sign off on what needs signing off. And you'll be taken care of. You'll be set. You'll have a pension. You'll have insurance. You could add your family on your claims. They can get benefits. Your children might well be taken care of with the 401k. Who's to say? And all of that adds up to whatever fucking color pill they want it to be. Why? Because when you swap the gray pill, when you swap the gray pill and you lose sight of ambition, you lose sight of a dream, maybe your dream is to have a family and kids. And I don't discount that, but this is a corporate podcast a lot, a lot can be said on what that means. But as a corporate podcast, are we family friendly? Corporate cowboys innately, innately move on their own. Corporate cowboys need to move freely in order to associate freely. But if they have to take other people into consideration when they're, when they're associating, they're a fucking liability. They move slower. They move slower. That's why in corporate, people who have families are a lot harder to move, are a, a, lot, a lot harder to, to convince and persuade. Yeah, I mean, they're easy to get information out of, super easy. Why? Because they have almost this retarded sense of um, pride, if you will, in a corporation they settled for, if you will. And they stopped moving. They stopped taking the gray pill, so they're more than happy to tell you about the reasons why they did it. But they won't tell you what they're doing to get ahead for whatever dependence they might have, their family, their wives, their kids. They won't tell you what they're doing to get ahead. Again, you never know until you get in. 
maybe they might have a little side gig that they're saving up to to bankroll and and and, and jump ship. That's always nice. It gives me a little hope in humanity. Other times, they're lost, desperately, hopelessly lost, and um. Well, they could only either be used or be not useful. This comes with taking the gray pill. It comes with getting a new perspective. It comes with perceiving the world in a manner that, yeah, could be said as largely utilitarian, transactional. And... Very few people will want to take this up. Very few will choose to um, endure it. Very few make it out in one piece. Nobody makes it out alive. But the reason I'm documenting it, the reason I'm recording it, saving it, broadcasting it, is because those before me that went and died, those before me that blew up and forgot. I mean, they all had legitimate reasons to do so, right? Right? They're at a place in their life because it was at that moment they stopped taking the gray pill. It was at that moment when maybe they couldn't swallow it. Maybe they, they had enough of it. Maybe they saw just how gray the gray pill was. They saw how gray the gray area gets. Maybe they wanted to stick to one side, black or white. Again, whichever you think is the cleanest. And they had enough of gray. A notorious guy. Not notorious. A notorious? Yeah, I guess he was notorious amongst certain circles. It, it told me that um, you have to grow comfortable with being uncomfortable. And, um, and I didn't really understand it even now when I say it. You have to grow comfortable to being uncomfortable. When I say it, it's, it's like, a, yeah, it's impossible to do, right? You would think because once you get comfortable in anything, you are a target, your prey. You get comfortable, you settle down on and you settle on your laurels, you sit on your laurels, just chilling, comfortable. You're a mark. <laughs> you're prey. You're a sitting duck. But when you're working with uncomfortableness, getting comfortable with just the sense of being uncomfortable. What he meant was that you must always be looking. You must always be looking. You must be uncomfortable. Always. 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 And be okay with it. That's it. You must always be uncomfortable. Why? Because, it, I mean, folks have said you have to step outside of your comfort circle in order to grow, right? And if you're always uncomfortable, you're always growing. Now, this isn't doing reckless things this isn't doing going out there and and you know throwing your life away on drugs alcohol gangs violence just in a senseless manner to me in my mindset i mean they they must have told me in like a, in a very wholesome manner if i recall right i was trying to learn something and i i couldn't grasp the concept in detail and they've told me that at times in life there's going to be um they, they they essentially told me that there would be that gray area they didn't use those words but they said that there wouldn't be a right answer there there wouldn't be a solid answer there wouldn't be a, a bright line rule if you will and we had to be comfortable. We had to be comfortable in our approach. We had to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. We had to be confident in our approach. 
confidence uh, confidence is key for a lot of things, but it's also being comfortable to get confidence, to get that confidence, to achieve confidence, an air of confidence. One must be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Like I mentioned earlier, it's, it's, it's you walking into a room and seeing that person from across the room who you know is on the same level you are taking the fucking gray pill and you make contact, but you don't recognize the face. You don't know their name. You might perceive them as a threat first off. When you first come in, they might, be, they might become a threat to you, but that's just being uncomfortable. That's being uncomfortable until you get comfortable with the feeling. Then you walk up, make your introductions, begin orienting yourself to the room and how everybody else is in relation to them finding out what their deal is and uh, investigating, interviewing, interrogating. That's it. It's, it's the gray pill. It's fucking difficult to swallow. I get it. I get it. Why? Because the first time I had to, to swallow it, I broke it in half and I, and I, and I chewed it up. And if, <laughs> that's perfect. I broke it up and I chewed it up. If you if you've ever taken pills, if you've ever popped pills on a party at, at recreationally or medicinally for therapeutics uh, on a regimen because you fucking had to, they were prescribed. If you've ever chewed one up, you know what it fucking tastes like. But when I was younger, that's all I knew. That's all I knew about taking pills. I saw it as food. I saw it as food. And you get comfortable with the taste. You get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Now I get, now the, the, the taste of taking any pill, just munch that shit up. It takes some desensitization. It takes getting comfortable with it. But when you become comfortable with being uncomfortable, when you are comfortable with getting uncomfortable, it's just, it, it makes the pill easier to swallow. It makes the pill easier to swallow. It makes life easier to live. It makes death easier to accept. It makes killing easier to employ, easier to envision. It makes not killing easier to do also. Why? Because when you're moving in the gray area, death is like a last resort. Killing is a ultimate last resort. That that goes out the window. When you first start, when you first start and you're like in the white or in the gray, sorry, in the white, when you first start and you're in the white or you're in the black, again, whichever is cleanest, and somebody throws something like death in your face, <laughs> what do you think you do? You 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 embrace it? What? Because it's not dirt? No, you get dirty. You get dirty, you don't know what the fuck to do with it. Some people cry. Some people some people seize up. Some people throw up. Some people <laughs> aren't able to process it. Some people file it and categorize it into a uh, into a, a, a folder labeled PTSD and never open it again. I've seen it all. I've seen it all. And then others, others are at least are able to appreciate the taste, are able to appreciate the feel, the sensation. And yeah, it's hard for most, but you're not losing a finger. You're not losing a hand. You're not, you're not losing your life immediately. If you can still feel it, if, if, if you're still here, can still breathe, if you can feel pain a little, it's it's no harder than taking the gray pill. <laughs> Have a nice one. See y'all next time.